Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In one of my recent videos, I post how I um, convert my Afan box camera into a slide projector. If you've not watched the video, please click on the link on the top right hand corner. Right, the principle of the side projector is quite simple. I have a light source at the back and then you pass through some condenser lens, go through the slide itself and then uh, go through the lens and you'll be projected big on the wall on the projector screen. I thought that would be about the same principle as a photo enlarger. In the dark room enlarger, we have also the light source. It passes through some lens depending on the design and it will pass through the negative go through the lens and we will be projected big on the photo paper. So I thought maybe I'll try to use my Afan box camera again to convert it into a photo enlarger. In this case, it will be a horizontal enlarger where I will project the image uh, horizontally onto the wall surface. Do come along with me to see how my this conversion will turn out to be. Is this as good as a, as a commercial photo enlarger? So let's go. Okay, so this is my idea for my um, DIY photo enlarger using my Afan box camera. So what I have here is my uh, photo paper holder in from my Afan box camera. So I'm going to adapt this to become a negative uh, film holder so that we can uh, put our negative here for our photo enlarging process. Right, so very simple. Uh, what I intend to do is to enlarge a 6x7 photo negative. So I have masked out the area on the ground glass, right? And this is 6x7. And what I will do is to put my negative here. So, and this entire thing will become a negative carrier, right? So this is really a DIY uh, approach. If this, if I'm going to do this in the long term, I will build a proper negative carrier by probably three printing, right? So for this one, it's just for testing. So it's very simple. I have my negative uh, here, so I'm going to just put it in front of this window, right? And then I will use the most primitive method, right? Masking tape to hold down my film, my negative. Top frame doesn't do anything. Uh, when used as a box camera, this is to hold down my uh, photo paper. But now it doesn't really um, serve any purpose here. But this frame itself should be flat against the ground glass, and then we can uh, project it for enlargement. So this is how the negative will look. You will notice that this is um, upside down because this is how um, the photo enlarger will behave. To, in order to project an upright image on the photo paper, your negative will have to be um, placed upside down. This is the same principle as the large format camera where the image on the ground glass will be inverted. Alright, so uh, let's take a look at the inside of the box camera. How's the setup like if I were to use this as a photo enlarger? Uh, the setup is very similar to the slide projector uh, modification. Huh? So behind, at the back, I have the uh, light bulb. Uh, I mounted the bulb socket on the back door, as you can see here. Right, and because my belief is that for photo enlarger, I don't need such a powerful light source. So I'm using a 11 watt uh, LED light. Okay, uh, because my enlarging won't be too big. So I think this should be enough. Of course, uh, further testing will confirm that. And this is where the negative carrier will be. Right, so I'll put it in here. Where I just I, I show you earlier, where I pasted the negative onto the ground glass, and I'm uh, the fresh nail lens 
right um, in the side projector I use two piece but uh, the other piece has I uh, uh, use it for something else so I'm left with one piece and we'll test how this go um, for this one the smooth side is facing the lens and lastly is the lens is this the Fujinon 210mm lens that I always use these are the chemical trays I have the UFERT multi-grade paper developer 1 plus 9 uh, UFERT rapid fixer uh, also 1 plus 9 and that is just the that is just a tray of water right so you will notice that again I don't have the stop buff doing the same workflow as what we would do for the Afan box camera where we will only have uh, the developer and the fixer we'll bypass the stop buff at the end of the printing session I'll discard the uh, fixer because it's probably going to be adjusted uh, because the developer is um, would have been brought over straight into the fixer right making it uh, become weaker much faster right so I don't have a proper dark room at home I'm using one of my bedroom at home as the uh, makeshift dark room there's no proper uh, light proofing so what you see here is the curtain and I wait until night 4 you can see it's at night now it's about 8 p.m. in the evening so I wait until it's night before I start my printing alright so um, this is my a fun box camera I have a bicycle lamp here as the safe light and then of course this is my cooking holder with the red filter right which I will just uh, put it over the lens shown here so let's see how the projected image look like I am using this wooden cabinet wall as the surface where I'll put my photo paper this is just a a template eh? a blank template that I use for projecting the image it's white in color so the image will be much clearer when projected so I'm going to off the light and uh, you will see um, the projected image coming from my negative right okay so you can see the projected image here when I move my focusing rod in the box camera it will be um, I'm focused so I will move it until I see the image as focus right and then I will put my grip right if you know how my box camera work after focusing I will put the grip on the focusing rod to kind of stop it right so this is the uh, focus image for now I'm just uh, focusing by by eye eh? so I am not going to use the grain focuser to check the focus so this is just a quick test to see whether my idea of using the um, a Faniscan box camera as an enlarger will work well. Right. So that seems to be fine. So I have but now what I'm going to do is to um, stick the photo paper on the uh, wall itself so that we can start to do a test print. Okay, so I mark out the two diagonal corners. So that should allow me to put the photo paper um, in position. So let's do it. And the photo paper that I'm using today is the Arista.edu Ultra. So this is the paper OEM from Foma. Um, the finishing that we are using today is RC Upper, sign kind of like semi matte. This is variable contrast. But I'm not going to use any filter at this moment. Okay. Right. So before we off the light, I thought I will quickly take you through the test strip process in case you are new to darkroom printing. Test strip process is mainly to find the best exposure timing for to make a good exposure on the photo paper. So we need to test it. Unlike a camera, we do not have a light meter for this. So what we can do is that um, put up a piece of photo paper. Of course, this is done in the safe light environment. Nah? And then what we'll do is that we will expose this um, test strip to different exposure time. Right? Usually, we will test with a smaller strip of paper just to save the paper. But 
for the sake of this video I will use a full piece of 5x7 photo paper to do the test strip right so what I do is that I will expose a small segment of the paper let's say two second exposure and then I will move my paper down expose another two second so what happened now is that the top section will be now exposed for a total of four second right plus two plus two while this is just two second then I will move down again and this will be six four two right so on and so forth um, usually I will do about five exposures that means from 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 seconds and then we can process the paper and see um, does any of this reading give us a good exposure okay so let's do it now so this is the test uh, strip and uh, now in the water bath you can see here that this part is the exposed for the longest period 10 seconds and this is 8 um, 6 4 2 right um, and from here we can decide which exposure should us the best so i think somewhere here about 6 the skin tone seems to be quite nice so what I'll do is I'll do a full print at 6 seconds and then take a look at the overall result, right? The only worry is that the hair may not be as black as we want it to be. Okay, so let's do another print. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. Alright, so this is the third print. Um, I've changed a few things. One of these is that I closed down the aperture to f11 and uh, it seems to give me a sharper print. However, the contrast is still a bit flat. It seems to look better on the video camera but uh, in real life I see it to be a bit flat. So I'm going to do one last uh, print. I'm going to use a Uford multi-grade contrast filter. Uh, so we can control the contrast by using contrast filter. So I'm going to try a grade 4. Right, so this is a Uford Contrast uh, grade 4 filter. More magenta in color. So what I'm going to do is still very much DIY way. I'm going to use just a masking tape and tape this to the rear element of the lens. Right, so here we have the test strip right and we can see the separation and I think I picked the timing about uh, six seconds right and it look overall it look okay but on closer look I find that it's a bit soft so what I did then was to uh, stop down the aperture uh, to f11 earlier this was at f8 so I start down to f11 and then double the exposure time. I think it looks alright but I find that it's a bit grey. There's a lot of grey in the whole photo, right? So, and then the last print I did was to put the grade 4 um, Uford multi-grade filter and reprint the print. I extend the timing by a few seconds and here you can see the difference in the contrast. This print is not perfect, but I think you can see the contrast here. The grade 4 filter may be a bit too strong. I probably can uh, lower it down to maybe 3 or 3.5. Three Definitely the um, box camera can be used as an enlarger. And I hope in the near future, I will continue to test it and maybe print on a bigger than uh, 5.7, maybe an 8 10 paper. Right? Thank you for watching up to this point. As you can see, I managed to enlarge my 6x7 negative into a 5x7 inches print. Definitely say the idea is there. I think there need to be some adjustment to make it more stable, like uh, making sure that the enlarger is always square to the uh, photo paper and some other small things like making sure that the paper is flat when I just use masking tape to tape it to the wall. And that will help to increase the sharpness of the print. 
Uh, the other thing is that my uh, makeshift uh, negative carrier is actually using a frosted glass, which is my ground glass that I use inside my box camera. And I'm using that frosted ground glass to hold on to the negative itself. I think that take away some of the sharpness also as the light pass through the frosted glass, right? So uh, if I were to do this again, uh, make sure that I will make a better negative carrier, maybe just, just two pieces of uh, clear glass to hold the negative together, right? But I think the idea is there. Of course, this is not a new idea. Horizontal enlarger has been around for a long time. Um, of course, the commercial photo enlarger are made with uh, better stability, better adjustment to gear adjustment and all that, right? Right, so if you own a box camera and you are looking for a way to print your negative, right, you may want to consider this idea, okay? Right, as usual, if you have any thoughts on this video, please leave it on the comment section below. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the red subscribe button to subscribe. Also, turn on the notification icon, which is the bell icon, so that uh, every time I upload a new uh, video, you will get a notification, right? Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye. Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it, and finally, do subscribe to my channel, and i see you at my next video. Take care. Bye!